create a um, worksheet uh, starting with uh, the template that we created in the last tutorial. So I'm going to, uh, as I've got this open here, I've got to uh, create new score from template. I'll click continue. And there's my four-part template that I created a little while ago. And uh, we'll click continue. Um, and I can set a key signature. My first key signature for this is going to be the key of G. So I'll go ahead and set that. Um, time signatures are will be 4-4, and there is no pickup measure. And uh, this one has only um, 11 measures in it. Let's go ahead and put we'll put 12 in just to uh, make it look good. And we'll bring it in and see what we got here. And so here's our here's our file. And so it it. It was kind of nice. It let us customize the template a little bit um, right from the start. So that's a that's a good thing. All right. So now to set it up, um, this is here are the uh, examples. We're going to do some nod chord tones in here. And so to set this up, we're going to go ahead and uh, enter in all of the key signatures, um, and then we will enter in our labels and our analysis and base notes, um, and uh, that'll be basically what we need to put in there. All right. So. Um, let's go ahead and start. We'll uh, start by, um, actually I need to move that over so I can still see it. There we go. Okay, and so we'll start out by adding, adding in key signatures. Um, shortcut key K. Okay, and so we have key here. Now our next key is going to be F sharp minor. Um, U score does not distinguish between major and minor. And one of the other things that's a little quirky right now is, is that it does not put key signatures in all of the stages. You have to put them in individually. Um, hopefully they're going to uh, update that. People are definitely talking about it. Um, but it's, uh, at the moment, it's not been implemented. So we have to do this one at a time. Okay, and you'll notice that it also uh, does cancels out old key signatures. I want to get rid of that. Um, there does not appear to be a global way to do that. We'll, we'll give it a try here. But, okay, D flat, A major. And again, I've got all these cancellations. This is the only one that I actually want to cancel. It's going from A major to A minor. And then A flat. We need the A's right now. Actually, now that I look at it, it did not custom give me the customized number of measures, so I guess I could have just skipped that. Um, okay, so we're going to put that in there. Um, we're in the key of C minor for this one. Now that's pretty interesting too. If you don't, if you forget, you're going to have uh, two different key signatures at one time. That could be really interesting. And uh, oh yeah, last one's D minor. Okay, so I have these extra measures. That's not a big deal. It was just it would have been nice if it had actually done what it looked like it was doing. So I'll select these measures and then delete the selected measures. I probably should have done this with the template in the first place, but I'll get rid of these spacers because I don't really need those. Um, and what I do need to do is go up to the Style menu and select Edit General Style, and then select System, and then change the number of systems to 3. We'll set that to OK. Alright, now we have to also go in and we have to go in and for each one of these we need to hide at the naturals. It looks like my courtesy signatures I must have already hidden, but see, most of the time they should look like that. So we'd have to go and hide courtesy signatures, and then hide that naturals. And yes, having to do this all at once. I tried selecting all similar elements, but it doesn't seem to work. Um, it on the oh okay it worked on two of them let's see so we'll hide the naturals let's see can I get it I see there are no similar when it's saying similar it appears to mean 
and then I still have to do this. Have to do this twice. Hmm. Okay, let's let's try that again. Select all similar elements. Yes, it selected them. Okay, so I'll hide naturals, but it's only doing it for one. So yeah, that, that's all a little implementation is a little strange there. Hopefully they'll be able to fix that. Okay, so I need double bar lines now between each one of these because I have key signature changes. So let's drag those in there. Okay. Okay, so I'm ready to enter in my notes. Oops. Back there. And so we'll click the end key here. And I'll enter my first note, which is a half note G. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use the MIDI keyboard to enter those in. So the next one is an E. Then I need an A. And a sharp. Flat. Okay, uh, the next one should be a quarter note, so we'll use the shortcut key. And shortcut keys are the same as Finale, not the same as Sibelius, so just so you'll be aware of that. And so I need an A flat, a G flat, and a D flat, and a G flat, and then, uh, and then back to half notes again. So this is all you know, straight ahead. Oh, except that that accidental was not the accidental I want. And let's see, so to do in harmonics, you have to select pitch spell. There is no shortcut there. But do remember in, in MuseScore you can go ahead and customize the shortcuts fairly easily. And our last one is going to be a whole note. Okay, and so now our notes are in, and so that's fine. During our analysis, we'll click on the note, text, select lyrics, and we, there's a shortcut command L for that. I've already set this to Sicilian numerals, so this should look just fine. So we're looking for a good note, Roman numeral font for this program. This Sicilian numerals I highly recommend has one of the nicest licenses because you can give it to your students um, freely. I think technically they're supposed to give it back after they're done, but I'm not sure that actually happens. And it's very easy to enter. It's just simply if you want the number um, as a superscript, um, you type, uh, you hold the shift key down. If you want it to go down, you just you don't, and uh, it will stack them automatically for you. So that's also very nice. Let's see. So let's see that, but there we go. And now let's see one. Ah, so so this one I'm going to have to change this. Okay, this is this is kind of the way Finale works too. And I could probably put this in voice four, but that's probably getting a little bit more than I doing a little bit more than I need. So I'm going to change that, and I'm just going to go ahead and put in four. So that I can attach the lyrics. So now, L. Back to actually, I have to go back to this one anyway because I was wrong. That should be. Um, this is something else that I found is that I, I the delete key doesn't work very much. Um, let's see. I wonder if it, see it. Ah, it's the other delete key. Okay, um, the backspace key that we use on the Macintosh keyboard doesn't work. You have to use the delete key um, over on the keypad side, and so if you're using a laptop, that doesn't work. Um, so Command L. You probably have to use laptop shortcuts then. Okay, so there's our analysis. And 
that's all placed in there. Um, now, we're going to need some other text, though. We need to identify the keys, and so we're going to the notes. Uh, we're going to create some text, too. And let's see, we need, I guess we need staff text. And so we'll go ahead and select staff text. Uh, we have to select a note or a rest, and then we'll create staff text. And that's a shortcut, I'll remember that. Command T. Let's see, I want to. Okay, so that's it's in the key of G, and then I'm going to have to move it down here. So I guess that's kind of the way it works. Okay, Command T. We'll just put all those in there first, I think. So I think I'm just going to do it that way. Not having used MuseScore for a long time yet, um, I'm not entirely sure that everything that I do is the optimal way to do it. And there's probably better ways, but um, this is what seems apparent at the time. So you'll just have to bear with me while I put these in. And I also am seeing something in my template that I would probably go ahead and make staff text just a little bit larger, just the default size of that, because it's a little small for my taste. Selected. There we go. Okay, T. And that's uh, let's see, G minor. Yes. Okay, let's see. Yeah, and you can't. Uh, let's see, can I get? No, nope, I can't get to another note head um, by using any shortcut. Obvi obvious shortcut either. So now I can select these. Now, nice. Fortunately, I, it's not too difficult to select and move them. Um, but as I said, I would like these all to be larger. Um, let's we'll see if we can do this um, after the fact, or if we had to have done this before we created them. But as you can see, they're quite small compared to my um, analysis font. Though not a terrible thing. Okay, um, so here let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the edit text style, and uh, let's see staff text. Let's just see if we can get that up to twelve. Uh, well, we can, but it obviously didn't change anything there, and I'm not sure that I can change it right now. Let's see. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. So anyway, so now that's that's set pretty well. Um, so next, I have to add in um, my labels, what they, what these all are. And again, it would have been nice if we had been able to put them in here, but we can't. So I'm going to have to create them um, separately again. And again, I, I guess these are going to be. Let's see what kind of text we might want to use for this. Um, and it looks pretty much like staff text is also going to be the option. So. So we select each one of these, and I'll probably have to center them. There was recently an argument going on on the music theory list about the naming of some of these. Um, I don't really want to get into that, okay? So if you don't like my note, I'm well aware. But there are differences of opinions in that. And, uh, I'm not really of one 
mind or the other. And this is the one that causes most people the problem, the Appoggiatura. Uh, as some of you may know, Mozart, uh, you know, up through the classical period, the Appoggiatura really was just an accented dissonance, more or less looking like an accented passing tone, but written like a grace note, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay, so we're just about done here. I'm going to finish entering in these labels, and then our worksheet will pretty much be ready to go. Now, as you can see, this would be really streamlined if we could, if I could have created a palette and only don't have to do this all over and over again, but oops, I need to do that. There we go. Okay. Well, actually, I'll, I'll be nice and remind them that this is a base suspension. And then finally, So there we have our template. It looks uh, it doesn't look too bad, and uh, and it's ready to ready to go. Um, uh, one last thing I might choose to do, and that would be creating doing this. If I if this is a two part example where they're just going to do these in this in this soprano line or in this treble staff, then these are fine. But if these are going to be four part, then I should go ahead and edit these and change the voices from exchange voice one to voice two. And so make those all voice too. Um, the thing I don't like about that is that um, by default the rests all are there, <laughs> and so I'd have to go in and then manually set them to invisible uh, to get them to go away, which could, you know, would be a little time consuming, um, and probably not necessary because it, it, they're going to enter the notes anyway. So, so we'll just undo that, and that's all we have. And so now we should save that as our worksheet.